Hey guys, how are you? It's our first tutorial for 2020, and yes, we're starting off with an image of the color wheel. Hang on, let me zoom in. Now, if you don't have a color wheel, you probably will. Oh, there's an overhead glare. Hang on, let's turn that light off. Ooh, that's better. Okay, you probably will find one helpful this year. You don't have to go out and buy one. You can usually find color wheel downloads like all over the internet. Just Google color wheel and you should find something that you can print. Um, I have a number of them. This is my small one. Um, you will notice if you pay any attention to the color wheel and you look at the color wheel, there's a definite theme to the sides of the color wheel. So one side of the color wheel appears to be more warm colors, suggesting lightness, brightness, warmth, bright sunshine, if you will. The other side seems to suggest coldness, dark, icy colors, if you will. This month, we are going to focus on, I'm going to push things up a little bit, this side of the color wheel. So you'll notice if you cover up half of the color wheel, this side appears to be warmer, right? Lighter, brighter, warmer. You will also notice it's something besides your reds, your oranges, and your yellows. So your yellow greens could go either way. They could be warm or cool, as can your, your red purples. They could be warm or cool. This comes in handy when you're creating art, wanting to suggest lightness and brightness, and you're wanting to experiment more with your colors and stretch your wings, if you will, a little bit with what you're creating. Okay, you will notice, let's zoom out just a little bit. I, gra I just grabbed a journal that I had laying around. So you will notice in this watercolor quick sketch of the Eiffel Tower that the majority of the painting is done in the cooler colors, the cooler side of the color wheel. But I added a pop of orange, neon orange in this case, to suggest lightness, where the light is hitting the metal of the Eiffel Tower, and it really just made the painting pop a lot. This painting of this monkey is done in an abstract manner, primarily with warm colors. There are a few cool colors in here for shadow and shading, um, but look how much sunlight is suggested by the use of all those warm colors. And of course the little pop of white gel pen doesn't hurt either. Here's another one. So this is a good use of, again, the warm color palette. I've used a few of the cooler colors or even the red violets from the warm, coolish warm, let's see, coolish warm side of the color wheel down here, right? And a few of the blues and darker ones to suggest the shadows and really make the painting pop. But look at all these warm colors that have really, really brightened it up and suggested sunlight. This is what I'm talking about. So today, I'm gonna to work with watercolor. You don't have to. I have this journal I need to, I need to finish. Um, here's a cute one. It's just, this is just all warm colors. It's nothing, you know, crazy. You don't have to get insane about it. All right, let's find a blank page, shall we? Here we go. I need a clip. Hold this open. I'm gonna leave this here where it's handy. I can keep my eye on what I'm supposed to be doing. We are gonna get our watercolor palettes wet. I'm gonna use watercolors. You could use acrylic paints. Um, you could do this with anything. I have two palettes here. One is a floral cobalt palette, which is primarily, oh, at least half of it is warm colors. But I also have just a plain this is your a plain watercolor palette. This is a Winsor Newton Cotman inexpensive watercolor palette, your standard 12 colors. So we're gonna play with, and I actually think I'm gonna use this one, just something basic. Um, if you're gonna use acrylic paint, I want you to get a yellow, an orange, and a red. Yeah? You can, if you have them, get a yellow green and sort of a red violet if you have them. All right, I need to get my brushes wet, I need to get my watercolors wet, and I need to get a mixing palette. I'll be right back. Okay. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our colors, and I'm gonna use the warmer, I have two yellows here, one is a cooler yellow, one is a warmer yellow. Just for the purposes of this experiment, just pick one, it doesn't matter. 
And we're going to just swatch the straight color. a cadmium red in here which is an orangey red so we'll use that in place of our orange and then we have alizarin crimson which is a blue red which is a cooler red still red So we're going to mix a warm purple. I'm going to take a little bit of the alizarin crimson, a little bit of the cadmium red, and a little tiny bit of ultramarine blue. Made it too blue. We want it to be on the warm red side of purple, right? Okay, so here's a, here's a... I just did this really quick. And this Windsor Newton set isn't the most well pigmented set, but it, it'll work. Okay, and then we're gonna take um, sap green, which is a warmer yellowy green of the two greens that are in here. You could, of course, add more yellow to it and make it even warmer. Okay. One of the fun things to do is to figure out just using your warm color palette, what other colors can I get from these, right? So what happens if you mix, you know, the purple and the green? You're going to get a neutral. So that's how you would get your neutral color or a, a neutral color. If you put a little more green in it, it's going to become more green, but a darker green. Let's see if we can... darken these up just a little bit. Let's see. That's a little better. So with watercolor, less water, more pigment makes a darker color. And then if we mix some of these together, let's see. And because these are transparent watercolors, you can also layer them. So that make, made a nice dark sort of reddish warm brown. Also, if you take the purple color and you add the orangey color to it, dark gray. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to experiment with mixing your colors together and seeing what you can come up with. Now you of course can just do them with the three, the red, orange, and yellow. You can of course, but it's a little bit more interesting if you add your warmer purple and your warmer yellow into the mix, you can get a wider range of colors and probably get something that's a lot more interesting. Once you have that, then I just want you to experiment with making a little flower. Start with your lighter colors and work your way darker. If you don't want your colors to blend, then you want that first color to um, dry completely before you go in with the second one. And then get some water on there. 
You'll notice I keep putting my brush over here. I want it wet, but I don't want it soaking wet. So I am just dapping it off on a rag. Okay, and then I'll grab some of that red. And before anybody asks, I'm just doing an abstract flower shape. I'm not doing a particularly realistic flower, although if I have to say it's some kind of mum sort of shape. Okay. We can take one of these other colors that we created. to add some depth and texture to the piece. Again, we're really, we're working wet on wet. Everything's very wet. If you don't like the way the colors are blending, then you want to work dry. But, um, yeah, 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 that didn't make sense, did it? You want to let your colors dry before you start doing this. In between each color, or take a heat tool to the piece. And just, you know, with watercolor, well, at least the way I watercolor, I stay light with the pigment load and the colors, no matter what theme of colors I'm working with. And I work my way darker as I go. More pigment, darker colors. This first piece, I want you to just experiment and play with your colors. Get an idea of what you can and can't do with this very limited color palette. Okay, we're gonna dry that off, I'll be right back. As you're doing this, I want you to remember that we're mixed media artists primarily, right? 
So that means that when you're done experimenting with your little watercolor painting or acrylic painting, that doesn't mean you can't add other things to it. So this is just a fine tip black disposable fountain pen. This is a Pilot Varsity fountain pen. It's just something that I had here in the art room that has a fine tip to it. And this is a white gel pen. So fun fact, gel pens don't always want to write over watercolor pigments very easily. They will do it, but they don't always like doing it. So you add a few marks and you get something cute and interesting like that, yes? Okay, I also want to share with you some work in single color themes that I've done in the past. So here is a piece, this is actually a reprint. This is my business card. The original is packed away in a place I can't really get to it right now. But this face was done on a piece of board with black gesso and only cool colors. But what if you did something like that with only warm colors? How cool would that be? Your red would be your darker shadow color and the closer you got to yellow, those colors would be your highlight colors. How cool would that be? I also have done a number of sketches in my Creative Year sketchbooks in the past. And they're sketches that start out with black ink. And then I use my either cool or warm colors to highlight the shapes and bring out the shapes. I'm looking for a good example. Um, to bring out the shapes in the drawing. This one is done all in just the cool, the purple, the cool, to bring out the shadows. And the white paper is the highlight. There's, I think, a good example of cool, I mean, warm colors in this one. Let's see. Yes, here, look. So I drew the pair of mittens, and then I used the pink, which is a warm color, to bring out the highlights in the mittens to accent the drawing. So I want you to go out this month. I want you to practice. Here's a, another one. I want you to practice with your warm colors. You can do a sketch. These are done with highlighter markers in my sketchbook, but you would only choose the warm ones. I'm Yeah, the warm ones. Um, you could do it with watercolor paint. You could do it with acrylic paint. I want you to play with mixing. I want you to play with doing just some little drawings. They can be blobs. They can be flowers. They, whatever you want. But I want you to play with your warm colors this month and I want to see what you do. Please share in the group. If you're not a member of the My Creative Year Facebook group and you'd like to be, there's a link in the description below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them over in the Facebook group or here on the video down below. I, do, I will answer most of them over in the Facebook group, just FYI. Um, that's it for today. Don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.